You're listening to How to Win with Mike Moore, the podcast that provides you with practical insights on how to win in every arena of life. Hello, I'm Mike Moore, and welcome to the How to Win podcast. These podcasts are based off 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Listen, this is How to Win, and this is our leadership edition. And I'm so excited about teaching you leadership principles. Our purpose in this edition is to inspire, to equip you to perform on a high level, to lead on a high level, regardless to your level of leadership. Maybe you're an aspiring leader. You want to be a a leader one day, or maybe you're a beginning uh, beginner in this leadership role. You're in a new leadership role, or maybe you're an advanced, experienced leader. You're going to get blessed by these leadership principles in our leadership edition. Now, listen, you may be uh, in a different different areas. It may be home, leadership in the home. It may be leadership at school, leadership in the field of education. It may be leadership in business. Maybe you're an entrepreneur, regardless to your area of leadership. Maybe it's ministry. Maybe you're a spiritual leader, regardless to your level and regardless to your arena of leadership. I believe that these podcast and our leadership edition is going to enhance and bless your life. I'm going to begin a series uh, today, a thorough series entitled Leading Yourself. Leading Your Self. Our background text and these leadership principles are based off scripture, based off the Bible principles in God's word. But back first Timothy chapter four, verse 16, that's first Timothy chapter four, verse 16 and the new King James version. It says, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. The great apostle Paul is writing to his son, Timothy, who is a leader in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You find Timothy, a young disciple, a young believer in Acts chapter 16. He was well thought of about from the community and Paul decided to take him along with him on his uh, missionary journeys. So Timothy is rising in leadership and now he's pastoring a church, and tradition has it that he uh, pastored a church of over 20,000 people, mega church. But Paul is giving Timothy some instructions in 1 Timothy 4. And he says, take heed, Timothy, to yourself. He's speaking to a leader, a young leader. He said, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Notice the order yourself before doctrine. Notice he says, take heed to yourself before you take heed to what you're telling others, what you're teaching others. He says, continue in them, continue in the doctrine, for in doing this you will say both, notice the order, yourself and those who hear you. Notice self comes before those that you lead. We're talking about leading yourself. This is an outstanding series. You don't want to miss any uh, lesson. Leading yourself is step one to successfully leading others. Now, I want you to listen to that statement. Leading yourself is step one to leading others successfully or successfully leading others. 
Now, but leading yourself will always be the greatest challenge of you as a leader, leading yourself. You see, I have to lead my lead myself if I want to be a successful leader of others. You have to lead yourself. Take heed to yourself, the Apostle Paul speaks to young Timothy. Take heed to yourself. Guard yourself. Pay attention to yourself. Prepare yourself. And that's what we want to do in these podcasts. This leadership edition is I want to help you, inspire you, and equip you to learn how to first lead yourself. Jim Tressel, president of Youngstown State University, said uh, something during his tenure. He said, you can't influence others unless you're willing to be influenced. You can't influence unless you're willing to be influenced. So great leaders are always positioning themselves to be influenced, to grow, to expand their leadership capacity. And that's what I want to help you to do. I want to help you to expand your leadership capacity. There's something about leadership. It's something about leadership. You never arrive at your destination. Leadership is an ongoing process with no end in mind. We should be growing as leaders for the rest of our lives. As we live on planet Earth, the duration of our lives, we should be growing and, and expanding our leadership capacity. Now, this series, Leading Yourself, is going to be one of the most important series on leadership that you ever have heard. And it's going to include four parts, four areas of study. We're going to talk in this series about personal self-awareness, personal awareness, Part two, personal integrity. Part three, personal discipline. And part four, personal growth. I'll say that again. This series, Leading Yourself, will involve four parts. Personal awareness, personal integrity, personal discipline, and personal growth. Now, in part one, we're going to talk about personal awareness. Now, you'll hear me say self-awareness. So when I say self-awareness, I'm talking about personal awareness, meaning the exact same thing. Personal awareness is self-awareness. I'll use those terms interchangeably. And then there'll be some times when I'll say personal self-awareness, but I'm talking about the same, I'm talking about the same thing. First Timothy 4, 16 again, Paul said, take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself. We're talking about leading yourself. In part one of this series, we're going to be talking about personal awareness. We're going to be talking about self-awareness. So, you know, I, I like definitions and definitions help us to get on the same page. So what is self-awareness or personal awareness? What What is, I'll use the word self-awareness more so than I will personal awareness. But what is self-awareness? Self-awareness has to do with studying yourself. Studying yourself. Now, I, I've uh, been a leader for uh, several decades, and uh, I have made the mistake that other leaders uh, have made, and that is paying attention 
to leading others and ignoring or neglecting leading myself. In fact, we often, leaders, we often spend more time studying others and less time studying ourselves. But think about the, the text that we read, 1 Timothy 4, 16, it says, take heed to yourself and to the doctrine, continuing them, for in doing this you shall both save others, save yourself and others. And I said that the order is important. The order is important because what we do as leaders should be an extension of who we are. What we do as leaders should be an extension of who we are. You know, we'll never be able to lead people farther than we are. We have to pay attention to ourselves. So personal awareness or self-awareness is the study of yourself. So we're going to be looking at ourselves as leaders. And as I walk you through these principles, I want you to be thinking about yourself. Don't think about the fellowship right now. Don't think about those under you, the subordinates. Don't think about others. Let's focus for a season on ourselves. Now, Tasha Urich, in her book, Insights, says that self-awareness has two distinct sides. Self-awareness has two distinct sides. She says there's internal self-awareness and then there is external self-awareness, internal, external self-awareness, uh, internal self-awareness. Let's talk about it first has to do with how clearly we see ourselves, how clearly we see ourselves. That's internal self-awareness. Let's expand this definition. Internal self-awareness is how clearly we see our own value, our own values, our own passions, our own aspirations, how we fit within our environment how clearly we see our reactions, which would include our behavior, our body language, our strength, our weaknesses, and how we impact others. That, that's a mouthful. So let's slow down and talk about this. Internal awareness has to do with how clearly we see our own value. Do you see your own value? Because you need to know that you have value. You need to know that you bring to the table something very important to your fellowship. So how clearly do you see your value? How clearly do you see your values? Do you have values? Do you have principles that govern your life, that guide your life? How clearly you see your passions? What are you passionate about? What do you enjoy doing? What lights your fire? What turns you on? Are you clear about your passions? Are you clear about your aspirations? What is it that you want to achieve in life? Maybe you're a leader in the home. Maybe you're a leader uh, in, at school. Maybe you're a leader in business. What is it that you want to achieve? Are you clear about that? Are you clear about how you fit in your environment? It could be your home environment. It can be school environment. It can be business environments. How clear are you about how you fit in your environment? How clear are you about your reactions? How clear are you about your behavior? 
Are you clear about how you're acting, how you're talking? How clear are you about your body language? Now, here's an area that often we don't study and we don't understand. Oftentimes, we're sending messages through our body language. We're sending uh, uh, messages about how we feel about others, how we feel about life, uh, about our condition, our mental state. And oftentimes, these messages are not sent verbally. They're sent through our body language. How clear about you, about your body language? I see people in arenas of uh, customer service, and it's very obvious to me that they don't like people. Some people don't like people. I'm quite sure you've seen people in service positions, but they don't want to be bothered. They give off the body language. You're interrupting me. Well, that person is not clear about the signals that they're sending through their body language. How clear are you about your strengths? How clear are you about your weaknesses? How clear are you about how you are impacting those who are following you? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about internal self-awareness. In Judges chapter 6, verse 12 through 16, uh, we have the calling of Gideon. Gideon was what the Old Testament called judges. He was a judge. And we see his calling in Judges uh, chapter 6, verse 12 through 16. An angel appears to him, a messenger from God, and he looks at Gideon, who's hiding out in caves and hiding out threshing the wheat because the Midianites are dominating the Israelites. And he's in hiding. He's fearful. And the angel appears to him and says, you're a mighty man of valor. And I'm sending you to deliver my people Israel. And you're going to deliver them. And notice Gideon's response. He says, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest I'm the least in my father's house. In other words, you have the wrong person. Gideon responds to the calling of God, and God says, I'm going to be with you, Gideon, and you're going to defeat the Midianites as one man. You're going to lead my people out of this oppressed state. But we notice here that Gideon has some issues that will impact, in a negative way, his assignment and these issues he's unaware of. He's unaware of. He doesn't have self-awareness. And he has really a, a lot of negative issues that will serve as impediments. He has the issue of low self-esteem, the issue of inferiority, the issue of fear, the issue of comparisons. He has the issue of rejection, self-rejection. He has some serious issues to overcome. He's never going to be the leader that God wants him to be until he becomes aware of his weaknesses, his strength, aware of God's presence, the equipment that God is bringing to the table. He's never going to be successful. But when we fast forward and we look at Hebrews chapter 11, the great hall of faith, the heroes of faith, his name is mentioned. When we fast forward in the book of Gideon, we see that he took 300 men and overcame a army of 135,000 people. So he overcame his weaknesses. He overcame his, his uh, poor mental state his negative self-image, but he had to first become aware of the impediments and the weaknesses in his life. He would have never, he would have never succeeded apart from self-awareness. And listen, this is so important. 
God has a calling on your life. There's something that God wants you to do that's very special and only you can do. But you need to be aware of so many things, the weaknesses and strengths in your life. You need to know how you're impacting others. You need to know how you fit. You need to know your, your, your values. You need to know uh, how valuable you are. Self-awareness. We're talking first about internal self-awareness. The second side of self-awareness is external external self-awareness. External self-awareness has to do with how others view you. Are you aware of how you're a leader in your home? Are you aware, uh, let's say you're a husband, let's say you're a father, are you aware of how your wife views you? Are you aware of how your children view you? Are you aware you maybe be a supervisor on your job? Or maybe you're an educator? Or maybe you're a business leader? Are you aware of how others view you? Well, you're never going to lead at a high level if you're not aware of how you're impacting others, how you're coming across, how you're speaking to others, and we're going to learn a lot in this series. But external self-awareness is how others view you, and there are several tools to assess how others view you, and you need to utilize these tools. The first tool is that you need some kind of feedback system where you get or gather insight from followers or customers or clients. For example, when you go into some restaurants, they have a little cards there and, and they want to know what your experience was like in their restaurant. I've gone places, for example, take my car to the uh, uh, car repair place and the dealership often will call after the repair has been done and ask, how was the service? You need to have feedback systems. Every leader need to have feedback systems to know how others are viewing you. Another uh, tool for assessing other views is self-assessment tests. There are tests. You can go online. You can Google self-assessment tests and take tests that will help you in gathering information on how others view you and gathering information on self-insight. And then the third area of uh, se uh, gathering information is through coaching relationships. I think every leader needs to have a coach. Every leader needs to have someone that they're looking up to that can give them honest feedback and hold them accountable. I think a coaching relationship will be great. Now, you know, as I wrap up this series, I was thinking about myself. We're talking about uh, self-awareness, personal awareness. And I, I, I kind of walked through this in my own mind concerning my leadership. And I, I, I thought about internal self-awareness. There were times as a leader, I wasn't aware of how I was coming across and I wasn't aware of certain weaknesses that I had. Now, I later, I later discovered that I had an issue of rejection, an issue of rejection. I wasn't aware of that issue. I believe that the seed of rejection was sold in my life early. I wasn't raised by my birth parents I didn't really know my birth parents well growing up, and I believe a seed, now they were good people, but there were other circumstances there. There was a seed of rejection. That seed was sown, and it began to spill out in other arenas. It began to spill out uh, in my academic work. 
if I didn't get the grade that I thought I should get, it began to spill out in my uh, dating relationships. It began to spill out in athletics. I played basketball. If if I didn't get the playing time that I thought I should have gotten, it that rejection just kept spilling out. And then I married a, a woman, a beautiful woman who left her home state to follow me and marry me. And yet we had some marital problems and a big is probably big Part of that problem was my rejection, uh, that that sense of not feeling loved, not feeling wanted. And I didn't even know I had those issues. I was unaware. And I was praying and I knew something was wrong, but I didn't know what it was. And I was praying and asking God, what is wrong with me? And the spirit spoke back and says, rejection, rejection. Now, I had to get in the word and find out what rejection was and begin to work on myself. Another issue that I had as a pastor, I was worrying. I, I, you know, I was worried about everything. I was worried about people coming to the church, church growth, or worried about spiritual growth, worried about finding. I was worried about everything. My stomach would hurt me early in the morning. I was worried, but I didn't know. I was unaware of it. You can be engaged in self-defeating habits and not even be aware of it. I was praying in the spirit and the spirit of God gave me an interpretation of what I was saying. And I was praying about my worrying. That's internal self-awareness. Then I could work on it. There's another illustration uh, that I, I remember when I was pastoring that has to do with external self-awareness. Uh, I, as a pastor in my study, I had a green couch. And uh, people, when they came in, whether they were subordinates or workers or vision partners or employees or members of our church, whenever I counsel or talk to them, they would come in and sit on the green couch. And I kept hearing over and over little remarks like, you don't want to get on pastor's green couch his green couch. And I was thinking, what about this green couch? What is it about this green couch? But it, I later learned that they were saying that I was so firm, you know, and I called it just being brutally frank and honest, that I was so firm that it was intimidating to some people. I had no idea that I was intimidating people because I thought I was the nicest person. Pe people growing up have always told me that I was a nice person. And here I am in this leadership position and people don't want to sit on that green couch because of my intimidating behavior, my body language. I'm going to tell it, tell you like it is. I'll fire you. You know, you don't get yourself together. I'll fire you. I told my son that he had become a new worker at our church. And I said, Mike, if you don't come here on time, I'll fire you. And I began to realize that when people say things over and over and they keep coming on your behavior, you need to listen because that's feedback. And I realized that I could, in fact, I had a subordinate a, a, a person that reported to me, and she said this to me. She said, Pastor, you could have said that differently, and I would have gotten it. And I thought about it. I could be more tactful. I can, could say it differently. I could help people to receive it. But I thought I'm just going to land the plane. I'm not going to circle the airport. I'm going to land the plane. And some people, that appeared to be very hard to them, that I was very tough and, and demanding, and I didn't want to be perceived like that. So I removed that, that green couch, and then I decided to work on myself. Maybe you need to work on yourself. Maybe you need internal and external self-awareness. Maybe you need to elevate your insight to you and how you're behaving, how you're reacting, your body language and how you talk to people, how you're leading people. Do you have a lot of turnover under your leadership? 
Do you have a lot of conflict situations in your leadership? You need to evaluate yourself. Now, I want to conclude this lesson by saying this, just because it works and get immediate results doesn't make it right. Just because you're leading and getting some results, especially immediate results, doesn't mean you're leading in the right way. Listen, I love you. I'm so glad we had this opportunity to share with you today. This is going to be great. We're going to continue in our second lesson on personal or self-awareness. I love you, and I pray that you have a great rest of the week.